Well, hi there, and welcome to Daytime Blue Ridge. I'm Natalie Fawn. I'm Lindy Kadari. We were just talking about our weekends, and they couldn't have been more opposite. More opposite. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, I spent a lot of time outside gardening, which I think a lot of people took advantage of the nice weather and did as well. Yes. And, uh, and I would love to have spent time outside gardening, but my son's been sick, and he just kept—he got sick on Thursday, and he's kept a fever all the way through the weekend. Is wow, that, yeah. that's going around. I understand. Mm -hmm. A lot of kids are having that, where it's just the high fever. You're right. For Everything a long else period of time. is normal. So um, I would sit out on the porch for a minute, and I go back in, and, and then my daughter, she jokingly has, you know, complains about her baby bother. I said, but now I said, did he <laughs> sick? And you have everybody to play with. You kind of like him, don't you? Yeah. And she did. She said, yeah, it's yeah, kind of nice bored. having her around. She bo was bored. I played with her. She talked so much. I finally had to say I can no longer have any more conversations. <laughs> her brain shut down. So. I know. We were out constantly over the weekend. I almost forgot about the kids. I was like, oh. Yeah, you, you guys, guys hungry? still here? You guys, you guys need anything? So we're out back. Yeah. Okay. But anyway, great weekend to get outside. Um, great weather for the Blue Ridge Marathon. Yeah, I was really excited weather, for those runners. Yes. Um, did you hear the winner? Uh, it was Jeff Powers from Philadelphia won the Blue Ridge Marathon for the third time, posting a course record, two hours, 48 minutes, and 34 seconds. Wow. Not bad, huh? That is so impressive. I just read the time before we sat down. <laughs> yes. uh, because you think about it, it's not just a marathon. First of all, it's a fast marathon time. Right. But for the Blue Ridge Marathon with all these hills. Hills, yes. Yeah, Mountains. Stud that it Jeff is. is. It is. Okay, so congrats to our very own Bree Jackson. She finished 20th on the women's side of the marathon. And congratulations to Jenna Zipton, who ran the 10K. Good for them. Mm -hmm. I think a lot I of know. my friends also ran that and are very, very sore. Today. I know. I saw. I, was, I think everybody ran the marathon. Um, it seemed like everybody on Facebook was posting pictures yes. and their scores. Mm -hmm. and, not me. No. <laughs> no. Not one bit. Been there, done that. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to run, but that one I'm just. I ran that half a couple years ago, I and it was just, uh, I think I mentioned here on the show that how miserable I was, because every time I turned around, it was another hill up. Yes. I was like, no. Seriously? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I like to run to clear my mind and to accomplish mm -hmm. something, but not when you're running hills and you're feeling like it's right. death yes. at every corner. Yes. Not fun for me. <laughs> All right. Here is, this story is sort of corny. But recently, Michael Bublé has been criticized for how he eats corn on the cob, of all things. I think we have a picture of him. Okay. <laughs> it is, it's kind of weird looking. Agre agreed. And apparently, and is I that how all Canadians? Well, I tried to confirm, but they say this is the Canadian way. Canadian way to eat corn. Okay. Whereas Americans take the horizontal approach, yes. and he's been made so much fun of that he jokingly tweeted that it's vegetable harassment. <laughs> <laughs> it's vegetable harassment. And uh, what he does with it, he said, "What I do with my cobs, nobody's business." <laughs> That That's is hilarious. Corn. And you know, I was, so I was looking online, trying to confirm if there's like a Canadian way to eat corn, right. which I haven't confirmed that. But they say the way you eat your corn on the cob, which is almost corn on the cob season, says a lot about your personality. Did really? You know? Yes. No. Okay. So, right. so there are actually three different ways to to eat your corn on the cob. Okay. Here's my notes. Okay. So there's a typewriter style. That's which, what I do. When you eat yes. from side to side. Yes, I do and that. That means you're rational, analytical, and not so much into surprises. And you most likely live a very organized life. Everything must be in order. Yes, that is Natalie. That's 100. totally me to a T. Yes, yes, yes. And in fact, if I do a row and I see that there's corn left, I'm pretty disappointed in myself. Oh, that's weird. <laughs> And, and I didn't even realize that this was a style until I read this, and okay. I thought, okay. And then there's the rotary style. So eating corn on the cob around and around, and you're spontaneous and creative, and you enjoy new experiences. You are artistic and have your own style. So That's you? not me either. Oh, no. okay. And then there's the hunt and peck, which I, because I didn't know what it was, but I thought, how do I eat corn? I usually eat whatever bites that look good, and then I go back and get the leftovers. And then the, eating corn on the cob in a haphazard way, you're a random thinker, impulsive, taking advantage of opportunities as they come along. Yes. And yes. That is, isn't that weird? Random thinker. I know. That is totally you. I drive Natalie crazy. Yeah, she's like, what, what, what? What was that? I yeah, tease her. Go here, go here, like little topic here, little topic there. I know. And all I was. Teasing you because um, I told you I've been calling a Jeep Natalie all weekend <laughs> because they're the same. I, I, I work with Natalie and live with a Jeep, and it's the same person. He's a good man. <laughs> He's a very good man. Yes. All right, we uh, SNL this weekend was pretty funny, I understand. Yes. I it, missed it. Yes. 
Seinfeld. Everybody loves Seinfeld. Oh, yes. well, everybody our age loves Seinfeld. Right. So Larry David has done a pretty good impression of Bernie Sanders. Hilarious. And uh, he used to be a writer for Seinfeld. So, of course, he knows Julia Louis-Dreyfus. Mm -hmm. She was Elaine. Um, and they worked together again over the weekend for a Saturday Night Live skit. I want you to take a look. Okay. I thought it was so Let's funny. Take a look at that. Our first question comes from a longtime New Yorker. She's worked in public. been pretty vague in the past, but how exactly are you going to break up the big banks? You mean a big bank breakup? Yeah, a big bank breakup. <laughs> yeah, break them up! <laughs> how? How? Once I'm elected president, I'll have a nice schmitz in the White House gym. Then I'll go to the big banks, I'll sit them down, and yada, 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 they'll be broken up. <laughs> debate. Also, you yada yada over the best part. No, I mentioned the Schmitz. <laughs> well, that was very, so funny. Clever. It looked just like, I mean, Elaine was right back in character. Love it. Very clever. Yes, they did Love a lot of the Seinfeld and Bernie all in one. have to watch the whole yes. thing. All right, still to come on daytime, many of you are making vacation plans. We talked with a travel expert about saving money, managing time, and water safety in the Carolina beaches. And a little later, we visit the newly remodeled Nature's Emporium. See how they're caring for Roanoke's four-legged friends. Don't go away. You're watching Daytime Blue Ridge.